All right, before we start this discussion of memoirs of an invisible man, um, I want to give a shout out to a subscriber of mine, Retro Ray out in Toronto. He's having some cold ass winters out there right now. He's freezing his ass off. And uh, I just wanted to say, stay warm, man. Thanks for the support. Seriously, you rock the shit, bro. All right, moving on. So this movie was originally supposed to be directed by Ivan Reitman. Ivan Reitman and Chevy Chase couldn't come to an agreement on the tone of the film. Ivan Reitman went to the studio and was like, him or me. They picked Chevy Chase, as you can tell. And John Carpenter, of all people, was hired on to do this. Now, this movie also stars Sam Neill. And this is, a, you know, one studio film away from In the Mouth of Madness, which is one of my favorite films of all time. And I cannot wait to get to it. Finally, tomorrow, I get to see, I get to watch it again. Um, and a departure for ch from comedy for Chevy Chase here. I mean, <laughs> I don't know many serious things that he's ever done. Uh, I can't think of any off the top of my head. Uh, Christmas Vacation will always be my favorite Chevy Chase movie. Um, I just think that is one of the funniest movies of all time, and it never, ever, ever gets old to me. Um, this movie's fine. Like, I haven't seen it in, fuck, 20 years. It's been a long time. I've only seen it once. And I remember it being fine then. And this view through, I was like, this is fine. This is okay. It's an okay movie. Like, it's good. I didn't hate it, but I did find myself bored at times and just kind of like getting on to the next. Um, but, all right. So let's get into the film. Uh, we got... Coffee spilling on a keyboard completely collapses their entire network system meltdown. Really? Coffee on a keyboard is, <laughs> is the catalyst for the whole system melting down and, and the place blowing up. And, and that's fucking ridiculous. But, you know, whatever. A little short circuit. That That's the best security they had on that stuff. Um, we don't even find out what the stuff really is that all that much. Um, I did really enjoy like the look of the building, the fact that it like blew up and, and, and sprayed out and it just like t took parts of the building away and you could see right through them, but you couldn't obviously go through them because they were there. I thought that was really cool. The special effects in this movie are actually pretty good. I mean... Is there some things that are dated? Yes, I mean, the whole thing looks dated, don't get me wrong, but pretty amazing t for the time, I have to say. They hold up pretty well. There's only a couple things that are pretty noticeable, but even that, I'm just like, wow, man, that's... Knowing what time period this came out in, like when his face is getting painted and you can not only see his face here without his mouth or his eyes... You can see through the other side too, which you would be able to see. You would only be able to see just the makeup itself laying on the face. Could they make it look better now? Of course, a million times better, but pretty impressive stuff. I mean, computer generated imagery back then was not all that sophisticated. So I thought that was good. I mean, after watching the Langoliers, I, I think anything's good. Effects wise, I love the Langoliers as a movie. <laughs> I'm gonna review that one day. Um, another person that pops up in here is Ned Ryerson, Ned the Head from Groundhog Day. I can never not think of that damn guy. Anytime I, anytime I see him in a movie, that will, he will always be Ned Ryerson for, to me. Um, we also get Eddie Lee here from Big Trouble in Little China. I was like, oh, Eddie, he's only in for like a minute, but he's the cab driver. I mean, I like that he knocks a fucking drunk dude out and uses his body to hail a cab get in the thing pretend to throw up so they can get out of the car like i feel like there was some attention to clever details here like oh he would have to do this and he'd have to do that and i like that you could see the food as he was digesting it and smoking cigarettes and it was going into his lungs and he was blowing it out and like there was a lot of other attentions to details that i wasn't expecting that i was like Oh, okay, that's cool. That's cool. They thought of that. They did this. There's some stupid shit for sure, but that's, I mean, that comes with most movies. But yeah, I, I don't know. 
I, they did some things that were surprising to me. Um, just thinking about being invisible, really, when you was watching this movie. It would be so fucking hard. I mean, it would be like everything in your power not to die or hurt yourself all the time. I mean, even when he was running across the street and he was going to like hop up on like just run right past and just right, run past the curb and go across. It's like you can't even see your feet to know where they're going to be hitting. Like when I run downstairs really quick or whatever, I always look down at my feet to make sure I'm like getting every step. But I couldn't see my feet running downstairs or even walking down them. You, I mean, I couldn't even imagine taking a piss. Like he doesn't even know where his pants are. Like he can't see anything. Like in the movie we see him so he's looking down he's trying to but even like taking off your pants would be difficult putting them back on finding them like there's a scene in this movie where he has to go find his shit put it all back on he's like trying to put his jacket on and he's just like i don't know where the arm like if you couldn't see anything i guess i mean it's like being blind but only to yourself like being able to see all your surroundings except for you would be horrible you couldn't shave. Brushing your teeth would be a nightmare. Like everything would just be impossible. So I was really thinking about that when I was watching this. Probably a little bit more than I should have uh, because the movie was not really interesting me all that much. So I was kind of just sitting there thinking about all the things I would have to do while not being able to see my body. Um, and... Although, of, man, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to get into logic here. That's ridiculous. I like the scene where the girl like gets her purse jacked and then he just like grabs it instantly and like it just would, in their vision, be levitating back to her. I feel like that purse snatcher would be instantly reformed. <laughs> he would never try to snatch a purse again. He probably was like, God was giving me a sign or something. His brain probably went nuts. Um, we get a Bodega Bay reference here, which is where they filmed the birds and obviously the, uh, the fog. So I thought that was cool. Um, we get the, Claude's, the Claude Rains outfit from the original you know, 30s Invisible Man. I thought it was cool that he threw on the glasses because this didn't really have to have anything to do with those. But it was, like, it was a good throwback to the old 30s Universal monster stuff. Um him having sex with Daryl Hannah. Daryl Hannah was a little prettier than this than I remember her. I've never been a big thing. I've never really had a big thing for her, but she's very, really pretty here. Um, but yeah, I was just thinking about them trying to have sex too. Like trying to have sex with an invisible man. Although, I've been having sex with invisible girls since middle school. <laughs> but yeah, having sex with, while invisible would be uh, pretty damn tough. And um, the fact that he survives this train fall is absurd. Like, he gets shot with a tranquilizer dart, falls off of a speeding train, off of like a hundred foot bridge into the water. Okay, for one, you wouldn't survive falling off of a train going that fast, more than likely. You would not fall, you would not survive falling off of a bridge that high and you would not survive being tranked in the water asleep and he says he floats for like a half of a mile before he washes up by a storm drain or something so he was what underwater for half of a mile while unconscious and he's not dead and he said he like coughed up a gallon of freaking water or whatever no you dead okay you dead. You're invisible for real this time. Um, and he's so clearly the cab driver when he pulls up. Like, I can't even, like, this is on a small screen. Like, I mean, in comparison to, like, the movie theater screen. But it was like, that's Chevy Chase. Like, right there, driving the cab. <laughs> so, I don't know how many people fell for that in the theater, but it was pretty damn obvious. Um, and then when the truck driver crashes into them, 
somehow the truck driver is more stunned and out of it than they are, even though he's in a huge truck and they're a little cab and he, he hits them and they don't even know what's coming and they're fine to get up and, and, and go. And Daryl Hannah even comes over and punches him in the face and runs off. And the guy's just like super dazed and confused. He must have smoked a joint right when he hit. I don't know. He was out of it. And, uh, I don't know. I feel like Sam Neill's character was just like a standard villain, you know, almost like a MCU villain where it was just like, they were just there. Like, he was like, eh, like, I don't even barely remember him now. Like what he did and what he was about. It was just kind of like, he had a couple lines, he got a couple scenes and he was just gone. And it's Sam Neill. Like Sam Neill is so fucking cool. So I don't know. He used the shit out of him in the next movie they worked out now. Uh, so there's that. And the happy ending, like, I get it. They're together and, they're, and they're, they're, they're up in a ski lodge that they bought. And he's out skiing. He's having a good time. He's got his girlfriend. He's, they're gonna, she's pregnant and they got a life together. And it's like, is this kid going to be invisible? Um, but it's like, his life is not, as I said, I overanalyze movies, but that's the point. It. His life would suck still. Like, what if he gets injured? What if he needs to go to the hospital? What if it's so many different scenarios where it's like, what would they do? What, what's going to happen when he has an issue? What happens when he has fucking a million different things that would, <laughs> would come to pass here? You know, what about his kid who wants to get to know him and so on and so forth? All right, all right, all right. I'm done. Um... As I said, not a huge fan of this. I didn't really have a ton to say. But, uh, all right, I'm going to move on to the next one. Uh, Retro Ray, man. Stay warm, buddy.